In this video, I want to go over a bunch of suggestions in order to make Modern Warfare 3 Zombies a much better mode. Now, it's getting very mixed receptions from the community. DMZ fans don't seem to love it that much. Zombies fans, a lot of them are just asking for round base. But there are some people who are having good fun, as it just being kind of a more casual zombies experience to chill, grind weapon XP and camos. In my personal opinion, I feel like the mode is okay. It's not amazing by any means. It's just an okay mode. However, I do see that there is a lot of room for improvement, but I feel like a lot of that could have come if it was just a proper sequel to Outbreak and not merged with the DMZ. And I have found it to get quite tedious and boring the longer you play, but that's just my own personal opinion. You are, of course, entitled to your own takes. Nevertheless, though, I think the mode could immediately be a lot better if they make all of these improvements that I'm about to suggest. And I really think Treyarch, if anyone happens to be watching this video, of course, you are not going to be able to implement all of these, but I do think that if even just a handful of these suggestions are implemented into the game, a lot more people would be more open to it. So let's go through the list. First of all, there's a bunch of features from Outbreak that are not present in this mode, and I think they would instantly make the mode a lot better. First of all, the grapple gun, which was added late in Outbreak's launch. However, it made traversing the map a lot quicker and seamless. If they were to just add the exact same grapple gun into Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, it would make things so much easier to get about the map. I feel like that is definitely a big problem is traversing the map. It feels like you just do so much running in this mode. And a grapple gun would help with that. And I also think that they need to have higher vehicle spawn locations because it seems like there are just massive gaps between vehicle spawns a lot more so than in Outbreak. And I find myself having to run really, really far all of the time to find perks and to get to the nearest vehicle, etc. So I think they need to increase the amount of vehicle spawns. Speaking of vehicles, I think they also need to add helicopters onto the map for some weird reason reason they are not in this and again they would make it way easier to traverse the map and get around so I don't know why they don't have helicopters and I also do believe they need to increase the amount of perk machine spawns on the map now perks can actually spawn multiple times on the map so sometimes you might see two juggernogs on the map for example but I don't believe all of them at least have two perk locations however I think that the perk locations need to be doubled at least because I think there's just way too big gaps on the map between perk locations and they make it a lot more difficult to get to. And because the Urzikstan is so large, that is a big problem. It's just running about the map so much, and is why it gets a bit boring very quickly. And another problem is with the TAC map, the UI just isn't really great for it because the map is so large. I find myself constantly pulling up the map to try and find the nearest pack bunch location or the nearest perk location, and it's just so difficult to navigate. And because the zombies never leave you alone, I find myself always pulling up the TAC map, and then I don't even get a chance to find the location of a perk. I'm looking for because I just immediately start getting attacked by zombies and also on the hood for some reason on the tack map It's all outlined in red with blood So it looks like you're about to bleed out So it also makes it more difficult to tell when you are being hit by a zombie So what I think they need to do is they need to overhaul this tack map to make all of the icons bigger Now the problem is because there are so many icons on the map That is why the icons are so small to fit them all on so I don't really know how they would do that Maybe they should just make all of the perks and pack a bunch icons bigger and I also think they should make all of the perk icons their corresponding color. So for example, Juggernaut should be red, Quick Revive should be blue, PhD Flopper should be purple, etc. So that would make them easier to identify on the map because right now they're all just white slash gray and it's just so hard to find and probably the Pack-a-Punch location should also be a blue color. That would definitely make it a lot easier. I do think the tack map needs massive overhauls. The next big thing, and this is a massive one, I think that the game needs to at least have a two hour time limit. Right now, it feels way too short. It feels like by the time you are set up and ready to go into tier 3, then it's time to start exfilling and you only get, you know, 10-15 minutes in there. And I understand that the point of this mode is to be like DMZ where you're supposed to exfil acquisitions so that you can spawn in already with perks and pack a bunch weapons, etc. However, I just find that whole process tedious. I don't want to play a full game or multiple games just to collect items so that I'm ready to go into the tier 3 zone at the start of a match. It becomes very tedious to me. And I understand that that is the point of the mode and ideally I would just want no time limit on this mode. I think it would make it a lot better like the original Outbreak. However, because Treyarch have merged this mode with DMZ, I think there's absolutely no chance that they're going to fully remove the time limit. At most, I think Treyarch will extend the time limit, but I definitely think it needs to be at least two hours. I think Treyarch may extend it in the future because so many people are asking for it, but I think at most they're probably going to extend it to maybe around an hour and a half instead of two hours, but I think two hours would be a lot better. The next 
next thing I think Treyarch should do, and I don't expect them to do this, is I think they should remove all humans on the map. Humans do not belong in a zombies mode. This is a zombies mode first and foremost. Why on earth do you have humans? They just completely laser you, have insane aim assist. It's just crazy. Why on earth are they in this mode? They're just so annoying. And it's really frustrating because obviously you have the fortresses and the strongholds that are full of humans. And of course, there are different warlord bosses you can defeat and they're all humans. It would be so much cooler if a lot of these fortresses and strongholds all had zombie bosses in them. Now, of course, there are some, but I think that's the way it should all be. It would be so much better if all of the warlords were replaced with zombie bosses. Now, I don't expect Trek to change this, as he said, because it plays such a big role in the gameplay for this mode, and for them to change it, they would have to change a lot of things, and it's just really unfortunate. I just don't like the humans at all. I think this was such a bad idea. If you want to fight human AI, you can play the original DMZ. That is there for you. You don't need to add them in this mode that is meant to be zombies. I understand from a storyline perspective, they make sense to be on the map. I understand that. However, it just makes absolutely no sense from a gameplay perspective and it really destroys the gameplay. I think they only really added them to try and please DMZ fans, but like I was saying, even DMZ fans are struggling with this and they would much rather play the original DMZ. So I personally think that humans are just really frustrating to fight and zombies are just a lot more enjoyable and I just absolutely don't think they should be in this mode. But like I said, although I want them to do this, I don't think they will unfortunately because like I said, it is such a big integral part of the modes. If Trek are just not able to remove the humans or they just don't want to, then at the very least, they really need to nerf them because right now they have ridiculous aim, just like in DMZ. They need to decrease their accuracy. They can literally snipe you from so far away and shoot you from so far away when you can't even see them. And they also need to reduce how much damage they can even do on you. And they completely just take away your armor straight away. Just so annoying. Why are they in this mode? Like I said before, many different outbreak features are missing from this mode. For example, many of the different side quests and objectives, such as the one where an Omega helicopter would fly over and then you would have to shoot it down and then you could get a bunch of legendary loot. And that is good because that is how they should do it in this mode. That's how they can incorporate humans without them being annoying because they wouldn't shoot at you. It would fly over, you would shoot it down. And that's how they should have incorporated Terminus outcomes in the storyline. Instead of having them attack you, they can have a different helicopter shoot over and like I said, it could be exactly like an outbreak. Other features from outbreak that are missing is, for example, fishing, many of the different side quests, such as the one with the dragon head, or the special loot box that you would have to defend from zombies for a certain amount of time. I think so many of the outbreak side quests were just more fun in outbreak than they are in DMZ zombies, and they gave it more of a zombies feel. There's the other one as well, where you had to shoot the different ether crystals, and then you would be rewarded with a legendary ether tool at the end to fully upgrade your weapon, and again, that would be an awesome side quest and would make it way easier to get a legendary weapon in this mode, they should have it in DMZ Zombies. And there's many other side things like this in Outbreak 2 that are just absent, and so many of these Outbreak features need to be in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. The next thing I think they should have is lots of people are complaining right now that when you exfil at the end, you don't keep your pack-a-punched and upgraded weapons, as well as your perks, into your future games. And I think this is entirely the point because obviously, they want want you to exfil with different crystals and perk acquisitions and ether tools so then you can go into a future game after you've built them up and then you can spawn in with some perks, pack a bunch, then upgraded weapons. However, that is a very tedious process and I understand that's the point of the mode but I definitely think you should at least be able to keep some of your upgraded weapons and perks. However, I do think that they should nerf it slightly so if you exfil with perks and pack a bunch weapons, I think you should keep your pack a punched weapon slash weapon tier. However, I think it should be downgraded by one level. So, for example, if you've only gone to Pack-a-Punch tier 1 or you've only upgraded it to one common, it will then just not be Pack-a-Punch and it will just be a regular weapon. If you've gotten it to tier 2, it'll go down to tier 1. If you've gotten it to rare, it'll go down to uncommon. That way you at least still get something but it's still downgraded and if you exfil with perks, I think that you should at least keep two perks in your game but only if you have at least four perks when you exfil. And the two perks that you keep are random. This way, the acquisitions are still necessary and they're still a requirement, but you still get some sort of bonus for exfilling with perks and pack-a-punch slash upgraded weapons. I think they definitely need to do this and it would make the mode less tedious with the constant exfilling. The next thing I think they need to do is they need to add the worm boss that you fight at the end of Act 3's story mission and apparently this is actually coming in Season 1, so this is something coming down the line.
fine. That'll be a lot of fun. Of course, original Outbreak had order around the map. That was so much fun. And this worm boss, when it is added, will be a lot of fun. The next thing is they need to add a main Easter egg. Again, this is already coming. We don't know have an exact release date yet, but Trek have said sometime post-launch. I don't think it's going to be in Season 1. Maybe Season 1 Reloaded, but I'm thinking, honestly, Season 2, because Trek haven't announced it yet, and if it was not Season 1, they probably would have said something. But yeah, I really don't like how this mode has launched without an Easter egg, and I don't know why this is becoming tradition. It happened with Vanguard Zombies as well, where they didn't launch with an Easter egg. This shouldn't be tradition. I like how there's still the missions that you get cutscenes and a boss, so it tells some sort of story, and that's better than nothing, whilst we are waiting for a main Easter egg. But yeah, it really should be launching with the main easter egg But it'll definitely make the mode a lot more enjoyable when there is one added The next thing I think they need to do is I think you need to be able to spawn in with at least four people Because right now it's three for some weird reason The only way you're able to gain more players is assimilating with other squads Or just players playing solo And yeah, I don't know why this is the case Honestly, I think they should just let you spawn in with six people without needing to assimilate I think it would just make the mode a lot more fun Being able to jump in with all of your friends This is the first time ever we've been able to play on teams of six in zombies and if they're going to give us this ability at least let you be able to choose five friends to play with instead of having to then assimilate with randoms in your game and that's the only way the next thing is we need more acquisition slots right now there's only 10 i believe and i feel like it's not enough maybe they need to increase that to about 14 there definitely needs to be more now i'm not sure how they would give you more acquisition slots maybe there's an upgrade process or different missions you can unlock to give you more but there definitely needs to be something like that to increase your acquisition slots they also need to stream line the inventory system. Right now of course there's a load of random different items you can pick up that you can sell for cash at buy stations but most of them are very little amounts and it would be nice if they had some sort of trading system for them or a barter system similar to DMZ. I also think that because all of these random items take up slots in your inventory that it would be nice to just have a separate system for all of the things that give you money such as a wallet or a bank and you can store all of these items in a separate thing to the rest of your loot so it's not taking up a load of slots. The next thing is, right now, of course, there is no proper solo play in the game. In fact, you can't even play offline, and I don't expect them to ever add it. However, you can obviously play by yourself if you just choose not to have squad fill on. Now, solo play is definitely doable. It isn't too difficult. It's definitely manageable. Some people are saying it's extremely hard. Whilst it's not the best in the world, it is still definitely manageable. At the same time, though, I do think they should make it a little bit easier for solo players because you're just at such a disadvantage compared to playing with other people and it's just so much more enjoyable playing with other people. And so I do think that if you are playing solo, they should increase your damage for the zombies and maybe even have a bit more health. You should also spawn in with a self-revive. And I do also think that they should make the missions a little bit easier. They don't need to make it crazy easy by any means, but it should definitely be easier than playing with other people. And I don't see why not. Someone suggested to me on Twitter that they should also add a trial system that we of course had in Cold War Zombies and in Outbreak, where you could pay Essence to then do different challenges to get loot at the end. And this would be good. I think it would be a much better system as well for grinding out all of the acquisitions as well as the permanent schematics and having a random chance from getting them from there as well as a random chance to get wonder weapons and other stuff. I also think they need to add the ability to buy weapon mods, AATs, directly from the Pack-a-Punch machines as opposed to just getting them from loot and completing the missions because it's just so RNG based. They can make them a bit expensive, not too much though. One thing they also definitely need to add in is if your game crashes or disconnects, you need to keep all of your items. You shouldn't just be punished due to the game's fault. And also there are a lot of lagging and crashing issues in this game. I didn't really experience much on the first day, but Playing today, the game's crashed and lagged so much and a lot of other people are experiencing similar issues and this is causing them to die in the game and then they are unable to keep their items and successfully exfil and it's annoying that players are punished for this and this was a problem in Vanguard Zombies where they had these massive packet loss spikes and the same is happening in this game. They still haven't sorted it out for some reason. The final thing I think they need to do is I think they need to add perk upgrades similar to what we had in Cold War Zombies where you could unlock crystal tiers for of course exfilling in the game or just progressing around. So I think when exfilling you should be able to get permanent crystal tiers separate to the ones that upgrade your weapons and these should just be for your perks like Cold War Zombies as I said because I think that the perks just are not good enough in this mode compared to Cold War Zombies. For example I think you run way too slow with stamina up. The zombies literally run faster than you or at least as fast as you in the tier 2 and 3 zones even with stamina up and I find it to just be so slow and I definitely think it needs perk upgrades. I love that system in Cold War Zombies and I wish it was back in this mode. Of course, Vanguard Zombies also had perk upgrades, but it was a different system where you just had to buy the perk multiple times and it got more expensive. 
and people didn't really like that system. I think the crystal tier permanent unlock system in Cold War Zombies was amazing. I wish the perk upgrades were back in this mode and it would make the perks a lot more fun to have different abilities you can unlock for them. And maybe they could also add that for the ammo mods and the field upgrades. I would love to see that system back. Anyways, they're all of the suggestions I have to improve Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Let me know what you think all of all of the suggestions down in the comment section down below. This would definitely make the mode so much better. And also let me know in the comment section down below how you're finding the mode so far. Is it bad? Is it okay? Is it good? Are you loving it? Let me know. Either way, whether you are loving it, whether you dislike it, I hope many of you can appreciate that many of the suggestions I have made will definitely make the mode more enjoyable regardless. I don't expect you to agree with all of the suggestions I have made, but hopefully a good handful of them have seemed good to you. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.